So in this, today's video, we'll be talking about memory acquisition analysis, volatile memory, live memory that you want to acquire and investigate uh, to, to find evil, to find malware in it. And most of the time as an incident responder, you will find that you will be called upon gathering this live memory and analyzing it um, straight up to uh, understand what's going on. And it won't be a dead box uh, forensic analysis in the traditional sense. Um, and this is where we talk about the quality of this in intel, the quality of this information that you will gather and how much that will help you in your investigation. Uh, it is the cat and mouse game uh, where defender always finding new ways to detect attacks and in the same principle attackers are finding new method and ways to evade them uh, the same token. Uh, volatile system memory is the battleground where everything's happening. Attackers are finding ways to deliver fileless uh, malware, where they inject their um, malicious code in processes already happening and take advantage of that. Um, and the battleground or the, everything is happening is in that tram, in that memory that the computer cannot work without accessing it. Uh, RAM means random access memory, and there's as well ROM, read-only memory. We'll discuss a little bit about the differentiation between these two. They are both considered the primary memory for a computer. And the secondary memory is your hard drive, um, your USB optical drives. So uh, there's two types, main types of RAM, uh, the SRAM, static RAM, and dynamic RAM. And there's about three as well main types of ROM, the PROM, programmable uh, ROM, and the erasable programmable PROM, EEPROM, and EEPROM. And the more they advance, the, the, the better uh, ROM got. Um, as well, part of the volatile memory that you want to be uh, uh, working with the page file uh, dot sys, which is uh, the extra part of the RAM that is saved on the hard drive and used when needed, the, the cache and the CPU, all that is part of that volatile memory. And when you want to investigate, you want to start with that volatile memory because you are uh, uh, scared of losing this, this uh, information and then you go to the non-volatile memory. Volatile means it's the flux of power, the continuous power, so uh, the data will be there. It needs that continuous flow of power. Uh, if that power is cut, everything is lost. Non-volatile doesn't need that. When you turn your computer on, the hard drive, the ROM, everything is there and nothing will be lost. Um, clear that out of the way now about uh, the type of ROM and RAM um, and what is volatile and what's non-volatile. We'll talk more about uh, the golden rules of any investigation not only a, a digital even investigation, but you know, these principles will help you in any understanding any crime scene as well. Um, the golden rule is to preserve digital evidence uh, in an unaltered state. But you have to understand as well, when you, the system or the tool that you use to acquire data from ROM, it's at the same time changing the, the, the status of that, uh, of that RAM, sorry. So you are changing at the same time, you're gathering, uh, copying data, uh, which is called uh, SME, uh, RAM SME, uh, you are changing that state of the RAM. But as well, when you uh, get your evidence, always save it, archive it, and encrypt it and use a copy of that because you might do something and, and change it or delete it or do whatever, you don't want to um, have a chance or any any uh, condition of losing the original uh, uh, copy that you because you might not get a chance to get it again. Um, when collecting evidence from a system, uh, you collect the most volatile data, as we said, and that's going on uh, not digital forensic uh, principles, even any crime principle, which is the law cards. Uh, exchange principle uh, and is a forensic science when dealing with crime scenes. Um, in forensic science, law cards principles hold that the uh, the criminal 
in any crime scene, he will bring something to that crime scene and take something off that crime scene and that could be used as an evidence. Lockhart's exchange principle state that whatever two objects come in contact, a transfer of material occurs. Uh, every contact leaves a trace. And this is when we talk about APT, uh, APTs, that they clean their logs and they clean everything they've done after them. So there won't be any trace, any evidence that they commit that uh, digital crime. Same with, you know, any criminal when they go to a crime scene and they clean uh, after they commit the crime. The evidence, the same principle is as well occurring and the same principle of low card uh, uh, exchange principles as well um, that we work on in digital forensics. Um, as well, when you want to copy your data from a live environment to and transfer it to work and, and analyze that data, you have to make sure that the media that you're using is zeroed. What we mean by that, that everything is in memory is one and zero. So you zero or you one all your uh, all the bits in that hard drive to make sure that there's no data or anything left. Because even when you delete something on a USB or any hard drive, the actual data is not deleted, it's just the metadata, the head of uh, uh, introducing this to and saying this is the data that you want is, is being uh, removed but the actual data is still there and that be will be copied unless it will be copied on. Uh, on. Uh, when you zero a media you make sure that it's clean and there's no other uh, uh, containment from other data on it. Um, now with the lab that we'll be using uh, I'll be using SIFT which stands for a SANS Investigative uh, Forensic Toolkit. It's a Ubuntu um, Linux flavor that have all the digital forensic and uh, incident response examination tools uh, built in, very handy, very useful. And except the format, the E01, the, which is the expert witness format, and has the advanced forensic format, the AFF, and the RAW, which is the DD format. Uh, as well, I want to mention the Romnox, uh, another um, uh, operating system, Ubuntu operating system flavored for uh, reverse engineering malware from SANS. Uh, a lot of these um, open source or projects, uh, they're very useful, very handy, and a lot of uh, very, very smart people worked on these projects to make them uh, happen and even continues to, to maintain them. Um, very excellent uh, tools to use. Uh, with live RAM capturing, we have to mention the recall project from Google that introduced the PMM, um, and you can go on that hub. I will put the link now as well uh, for you to, to go and uh, download these tools uh, for you to, to use. There's the Lin PMM, which is for Linux, and there's the OS X PMM for um, uh, Mac, and there's the Win PMM for Windows. And by default, it is the advanced forensic file format, the AFF4 um, that they will work on. So this is kind of the introduction of what we'll be doing. Um, the lab will we acquire data, we'll use FTK Imager to acquire the data from the RAM. And we'll go to another tool and we'll explain what we'll be doing and how we analyze this data and get uh, or find evil in any, in any of these data. And as well, we'll go to and create a Yara rule and scan with the Yara to show you how you uh, gather the image, how you analyze it, how you get the IOCs uh, from uh, your from your finding and then how you utilize and use these ones into creating a rule in Yara and scanning that. So uh, shortly we'll start and uh, start the lab and we'll go through all that. So uh, what we'll be doing is uh, we'll be using the FTK imager, uh, FTK imager from Access Data to capture the, the memory live and you can put FTK manager it's a, first of all it's a free software that you can download and utilize in your environment um, you can save it on a USB have that USB at least to be 32 gig um, to copy and acquire the data of that uh, memory on that USB and take it with you so you can plug that USB to any machine we can go here and capture memory. You can see here this small tab and um, destination or path of that 
memory uh, you can put it on a USB straight up in a folder name the case that you want to put this information on um, and the date that you acquired that data just uh, for your reference you can include the page file that says here you can include the create ad1 file which is uh, something um, access data started or have um, that is extension their extension um, and you just capture uh, the memory here uh, that will take a little bit of time depend of how uh, big your memory is if you have 16 32 gig um, that will take um, some time but the majority of uh, workforce machines are in the 8 gig range so that shouldn't be that bad so you start capturing the memory here and you name the memory to lab mem or whatever or and the date uh, that you're taking it with here and you have to capture it and um, that's easy and simple uh, to capture the memory that will be just capturing now the memory and later we'll start using volatility to investi investigate that dump of memory and see if there's any malware or what's there on on that uh, on that machine so this is simply how we capture the data we can this red line as well uh, we'll have maybe a different session just to explain uh, red line uh, from far eye um, they have similar capabilities and they do a lot of um, investigation straight up for you as well from there uh, we won't be using Redline in this investigation today, uh, but I just want to show you that there's other options as well out there, and Redline is a free tool that you can download and use as well. So now that we have acquired that dump of memory, now we want to analyze it. We're using Swift from SANS um, with uh, volatility as our tool to investigate uh, this memory. So the first thing first is to get the image info um, and that will give us the, the uh, d determine the profile um, to, to be used for this memory and that's based on the KDBG which is the kernel uh, debugger uh, block uh, that we can analyze and use to uh, to get the profile that will be analyzing this memory upon and uh, this is the plugin that we use here it's, uh, it's image info there are so many useful uh, plugin uh, that plugins that you can use with uh, volatility and we'll, we'll uh, I'll display some of them uh, now as we demonstrate what we can use with this dump of data so when we acquire this data this is how we analyze it that will take some time to um, to finish so we won't be waiting all that time we'll get back to it later okay so here now we know we have the profile that we'll be using we have all the data that all information that we need to be using Now I want to see the process, the process that are or that have been captured. So PS list is the first one um, to use. Uh, the one I use is the PS3, but I'll just will demonstrate or show you um, other options before I start um, uh, using the one I usually use. So PS list is the most you know convenient one, straightforward. It will give you kind of what PIDs are, are running or and the parent PIDs and for example this is system this is usual this is the SMSS uh, which is the session um, as well 
the parents are all good uh, SVC host uh, they all have that parent which is the services uh, that like looks legit uh, let's do PS scan PS can give you more um, detailed information there as well so as you can see as well here Explorer 1484 and you will see the difference between when I say for example PS3 give you the same information but in a better visual style for you to analyze it faster because you as an incident responder you just want to get your information um, the fastest possible way so now I can see here the the parents and the childs and I can see here Explorer let's start getting this information from here so I'll start something called an incident investigation base your finding on a way just to capture the data that you want to be picking it up and it makes sense to you and that is the process 1640 so these are the ones this is the parent of Explorer so Explorer is opening uh, reader SL exe which to be honest I don't know exactly what why is that it looks suspicious for me I'll just put the command line just to see what command it is it accessing to to open this so already I'm starting to get suspicious with these being like that so now this is the 640 and this is the Explorer it's saying it's um, Adobe Reader 9 and it's opening Reader S uh, underscore SL dot exe and this is the parent of that process so this process is the parent for this process which doesn't make too much sense but let's see connection happening or anything out of the usual with the network it won't take too much time hopefully all right so I'm getting this process again again this is the Explorer parent process connecting to these IPs and opening this one alright so this is enough indicators to to copy these IPs now and let's call these IOCs here this is the first IP probably you might have to change you add things and you discover okay it's it's not malicious you remove it but you start recording uh, your your finding as you go so I have these two IPs now I'm suspicious enough to grab this uh, from memory and analyze it and get the hash of it let's just get the process and that was the this one um, I think just to be ok 
okay so we used proc dump here and that process only so you won't waste too much time to get the the dump for this and uh, try to hash this one to see if there's any malicious funding or any malicious hits on it um, online so excellent so now we've got this um, this one and let's go to virus total see if there's anything <laughs> okay um, it definitely doesn't look good and this is a Trojan Artemis we'll get into it more but that definitely doesn't look good Alright, so we have this hash now as well as an IRC. It's, it's good. Now let me get the string from memory as well for this process. the dump yep so that's that's the dump here now let's get the strings out of there so let's see okay, let's pipe this one too I don't want to go too much into it okay so from here we can get a lot of um, indicators as well we use them there in um, Yara and I'll show you when we write it but here uh, you can see that's all Bank of America Chase um, it's all about banking hundreds of domains oh, okay so this is as well uh, like a landing page to try to steal your information make you enter your credit card and password and what have you not and, and um, do a lot of nasty things okay interesting now let's use this IP here um, in our stream From this string, from this dump, um, we check this IP address and it's communicating with the C2 and there's that post to that string. So it's exfiltrating data, it's stealing data from your environment and sending it to this to this uh, string here. That's see exactly what this string is ah oh, ok 
okay so now we don't so it's connecting to this IP address as well there's a lot of domain a lot of uh, tools that you can use to uh, get a lot of Intel on uh, IPs uh, one of them I'll show you as well from Cisco uh, which is Cisco Telios Intelligence so you can put the IP addresses let's see like the origin of for example this one sometimes it's an old campaign so won't get too much intel on it but give you an indication of the country so this is coming from Germany connecting from Germany alright so now I have confirmed it's a bank Trojan um, and these IPs are getting exfiltration data from your environment from your host and sent to these C2 servers to steal your data um, that will be enough IOCs enough evidence that this is a malicious uh, incident happened this is a malicious binary here uh, that we need to write a Yara rule probably and scan our environment straight up with it these IPs we should tell our network team or networking uh, they need to be blocked in the firewall and in the environment um, and you move up with that as well the more you get uh, IOCs indications as well the more you can uh, block and update in your environment um, just as well want to show you the proof like you know our finding for example uh, just the first one we ran which was the this one just to get the process uh, PID number just to confirm as well with some uh, from of our findings as well Right, so here we have all the processes. So now there's a really useful uh, plugin as well, which is Malfind, and I'll put the process that we're interested. Which is 1640. Yep. Let's see. If it comes with anything displayed, that means it is a malicious. There's indicators that this process is doing something uh, unusual. Malfind is a very useful uh, plugin as well. There's another one, it's Holofind as well. It's they're really useful and help you a lot straight up to as a uh, fast indicator of that process. So here we find uh, page executed read write, which give us a very good indication that this is a very bad and malicious binary here. Uh, what it's telling us it's this process is happening only in memory but doesn't map anything up to the hard drive and this is very unusual and shouldn't be um, let's try for example the LSAS process which is the 664 now if you run this one and it is clean nothing should happen nothing should come up so you see nothing came uh, this is a clean process uh, with the LSAC, but the other one that we investigated came with uh, Malfine. Remember that plugins very useful to use. So now that um, we have our IOCs, our indicators that we can update, we did go with the strings, and we have a lot of hexa and uh, whatnot for us to utilize in our Yara. The Yara, you can open any. Uh, text editor or any uh, the one you prefer to use and you can you just start it with rule let's say this is uh, bank Trojan the curly this is how you open it and you can here add meta in Meta you can put your name if you want the date the hash that you found uh, some source whatever you want to put uh, 
the strings or strings are the main thing here so you have here a dollar sign it has to start with a dollar sign uh, one equal and that would be anything here that you find from the strings I will find few uh, good ones and add them and show them to you um, and this is where the, the IOC the indicators are in that string and then you have condition this is just quickly going through how to write a yarn and condition let's say s1 uh, which is string 1 or string two, so any of these uh, found within the scan it will give you that uh, it is it found something and this is the, the, the malicious uh, code that you're searching for so I'll pause to go find some good strings and I'll uh, come back and um, show you exactly what I'm talking about so here as uh, I showed you we had that rule or got found these strings the LLs and other things that I found that I can add as indicators there condition all of them should be met uh, to apply or to 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 for that scan to work uh, now there's few options for that to to be done you can that do that from volatility as well do that scan or uh, you can use Yara straight up as uh, your scanner so this is Yara and I'll just show you what switches that you can use in your environment because I'll be using four of them now um, and we called our rule lab Yara and the file or the executable that we want to 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 uh, to scan. First of all, let's uh, get that. So here we have the rule and uh, the Yara rule that we want to scan depending on and uh, the, the file that we have. Let's see if we have any hits there. Okay, so all of them were met and uh, displayed here for you. Uh, let me just let's cut this one and a new rule here. Let's, uh, let me see here all of them right so I'm getting all of them should be met for this scan to work now this should not come with anything if we go to the conditions and I'll put any so as you can notice here all the ones that met worked but this one that was one doesn't work wasn't shown here this is just to give you a small uh, very practical example of how to get your IOCs IPs and hashes and whatnot here and uh, as well to write a Yara rule and run through your environment and scan your environment using Thor or any tools that you want to use or any of the new ADRs uh, endpoint protection solutions have uh, now capabilities to add Yara rules and scan your environment and that will uh, give you an edge on whatever you're finding with your threat hunt whatever you're doing you can run straight up your finding and scan your environment and start your mitigation remediation uh, faster than anything else uh, that will be it thank you for watching and uh, that's it